Let's get the fluent solver to solve the boundary value problem for us. So we have specified the boundary value problem in fluent. We have given it a mesh so it can do a control volume balance for each cell and derive the system of algebraic equations relating cell center values. And as you spoke, spoke earlier, um, this is uh, 15,000 uh, algebraic equations on our mesh. And the solver can invert that and calculate the cell center values of UVP. Now, the, in terms of inverting these algebraic equations, I'm going to a different slide from a pre-analysis. Um, here I talked about how these algebraic equations are nonlinear and one has to linearize it about guess values uh, and introduce a linearization in the process and you, in, you minimize a linearization error by updating the guess iteratively and you stop the iterations when your mass and momentum imbalances are below a tolerance. Now if the mass and momentum imbalances are zero, you're going to get an exact solution to the algebraic equations and linearization error is going to be zero, but it's never going to be um, zero the imbalances, but they're going to be small. I'll go into fluent and uh, so under solution is where you know I, I do things that affect how the um, mathematical model is being solved and I'll go under initialization okay and I will select standard initialization and I'll give the initial guess values to start the iterative solution to the nonlinear algebraic equations. So I'll say each cell center, the gauge pressure is zero, the velocity in the x direction, u velocity is one, and b velocity is zero. So that's a very simple initial guess. And of course, at every cell center value, that will get updated. So that's my initial guess. And then I'll go to run calculation and get Answers um, uh, fluent to solve that iteratively. So I'll say 100 iterations and then calculate. And these residuals are the aggregate um, mass and momentum imbalance. So this continuity residual is the aggregate mass imbalance. X velocity residual is the aggregate um, X momentum imbalance, and um, this is the, the Y momentum imbalance. And they have fallen below 10 to the power of minus three, which is the default. So if I go into the console, I'll see that they have fallen below 10 to the power of minus three. Now, a best practice would be to also actually monitor how the drag coefficient is varying as we are iterating, uh, something additional to the residuals. In the interest of time, I would do that uh, instead, what I'll say is, you know what, I will drop these uh, residuals even further uh, in a way to reduce a linearization error. So I'll go to monitors, residual, and change the tolerance to 10 to the power of minus 6. Say OK. Come back to run calculation. Calculate, okay. And I'll say, okay, and now you can see that uh, the residuals have dropped below 10 to the power of minus six. Um, so um, presumably the linearization error is, is uh, pretty small. So linearization is pretty small, and so we should have a reasonable solution to a boundary value problem. So we can move on to uh, getting fluent to take the cell center values and do the post-processing and look at various uh, quantities. So we can go back to fluent, say file, um, save project, and we'll do the post-processing in a different window. Uh, so I will just close fluent at this point.